Hello everyone, Dr. Mad here. Let's get mad about a Christmas carol. Okay, so we are now starting on stave four, the last of the spirits. The phantom slowly, gravely, silently approached. When it came near him, Scrooge bent down upon his knee, for in the very air through which the spirit moved, it seemed to scatter gloom and mystery. It was shrouded in a deep black garment, which concealed its head, its face, its form, and left nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. But for this it would have been difficult to detach its figure from the night and separate it from the darkness by which it was surrounded. Okay, so <clears throat> phantom is just another word for ghost. Gravely means seriously. Scatter means to spread. Shrouded means covered. A shroud is a piece of cloth that is used to cover a dead body. So obviously that's an appropriate word to use here. Garment means a piece of cloth or clothing. Conceal means to hide. Form means shape. And detach normally means to remove something, but here, detach its figure from the night means that Scrooge found it difficult to work out, to distinguish, to work out where the ghost was and in relation to the night, because it was covered in black cloth. Okay, so as you can see there in the picture. Okay. He felt that it was tall and stately when it came beside him, and that its mysterious presence filled him with a solemn dread. He knew no more, for the spirit neither spoke nor moved. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, said Scrooge. The spirit answered not, but pointed onward with its hand. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us, Scrooge pursued. Is that so, spirit? The upper portion of the garment was contracted for an instant in its folds, as if the spirit had inclined its head. That was the only answer he received. Although well used to ghostly company by this time, Scrooge feared the silent shape so much that his legs trembled beneath him, and he found that he could hardly stand which he prepared to follow, when he prepared to follow it. The spirit paused a moment as observing his condition and giving him time to recover. Okay, so that page is fairly straightforward. So stately means impressive. Solemn means serious. Dread is when you are scared of something that's going to happen in the future. And garment means a piece of clothing. Contract means to decrease in size. Incline means turn. So the ghost obviously nods or something like that, which makes the, the garment move. And the rest is fairly straightforward. But Scrooge was all the worse for this. It thrilled him with a vague, uncertain horror to know that behind the dusky shroud, there were ghostly eyes intently fixed upon him, while he, though he stretched his own to the utmost, could see nothing but a spectral hand and one great heap of black. Ghost of the future, he exclaimed. I fear you more than any spectre I have seen, but as, as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? It gave him no reply. The hand was pointed straight before them. Lead on, said Scrooge, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Lead on, spirit. The phantom moved away as it had come towards him. Scrooge followed in the shadow of its dress, which bore him up, he thought, and carried him along. Okay, so again, fairly straightforward. A thrill means to excite, but and usually in a positive sense. 
But here Dickens is using it negatively, as you can see there. It's exciting it with horror. Dusky means dark. Shroud, remember, means a piece of cloth to wrap a dead body. And spectral is to do with ghosts. Spectre is another word for ghost. So I'm linking to the word spectral there. And here he's saying that I hope to change, so I'm happy to go with you. With the other ghost, remember, he, he didn't really want to go with them. <clears throat> Wayne means to decrease. Sca uh, yeah, so that's fairly straightforward. They scarcely seemed to enter the city, for the city rather seemed to spring up about them and encompass them of its own act. But there they were in the heart of it, on change amongst the merchants who hurried up and down and chinked the money in their pockets and conversed in groups and looked at their watches and trifled thoughtfully with their great gold seals and so forth, as Scrooge had seen them often. The spirit stopped beside one little knot of businessmen. Observing that the hand was pointed to them, Scrooge advanced to listen to their talk. Okay, so scarcely means hardly to enter the city, but he's saying that they they sort of went towards the city, but then the city sort seemed to come to them, and encompass means to surround. But before he knew it, they were in the middle of the city of London, so change means exchange, so this is where all the banks are, or used to be. Things have changed a little bit now nowadays, but... In the right in the center of central London, where all the banks are, and merchants means traders, and chinked means clinked. What kind of a word is that? Onomatopoeia. And they're talking in groups, looking at their watches, and trifling means just playing with, with their great gold seals. So a seal in this case is like a some kind of a symbol that identifies the merchant, and they would put it on whatever they're selling. I mean, in this case, it would be documents, money documents, not so much actual physical goods, probably. And then not, this it means, usually mean, it, it can mean when you tie things together or a knot in a wood. But here, it means a group, okay, so a little group of businessmen. No, said a great fat man with a monstrous chin. I don't know much about it. Either way, I only know he's dead. When did he die? inquired another. Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? asked a third, taking a vast quantity of snuff out of a very large snuff box. I thought he'd never die. God knows, said the first with a yawn. What has he done with his money? asked a red-faced gentleman with a pendulous excrescence on the end of his nose that shook the, like the gills of a turkey cock. Okay, so monstrous means huge. And so they're talking about somebody who's died and obviously you can probably guess who they're talking about. So vast means huge. Snuff is powdered tobacco. But you can see with a yawn that they don't really care about this person who's died, okay? So pendulous means like a pendulum, so hanging loosely. Excrescence means some kind of a growth. So he's got this kind of a growth on his nose, which is hanging down. And there's a simile here. So turkey cock means a male turkey. And if you've ever seen a picture of one or seen one in the front, so the gills, there's this bit in the front that hangs loose on a, tur on a male turkey. So this, this man has something like that on the end of his nose. I haven't heard, said the man with the large chin, yawning again. Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. This pleasantry was received with a general laugh. It's likely to be a very cheap funeral, said the same speaker. For upon my life, I don't know anybody to go to it. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if a lunch is provided observed the gentleman with the excrescence on his nose, but I must be fed if I make one. Another laugh. 
Well, I am the most disinterested among you, after all, said the first speaker, for I never wear black gloves and I never eat lunch, but I'll offer to go if anybody else will. When I come to think of it, I'm not at all sure that I wasn't his most particular friend, for we used to stop and speak whenever we met. Bye-bye. Speakers and listeners strolled away and mixed with other groups. Scrooge knew the men and looked towards the spirit for an explanation. Okay, so he's saying, I don't know what he, this man has done with his money. Obviously, they're talking about Scrooge, okay? Maybe he's left it to his company, and then he makes a joke that he hasn't left it to me, that's for sure. So pleasantry, like joking. And this man says it's going to be a very cheap funeral, and no one's going to it, as far as he knows. And he's saying, shall we go? So he's just being kind. Obviously, the sad, saddest thing in the world is a funeral where nobody goes. And he says, well, I don't mind going, but he's only going to go if they give me lunch. So this, remember, means, what does it mean? Uh, some kind of a growth. And he's saying, I'll go, I'll make one of the party if they give me lunch. And they laugh again. So disinterested is a bit like uninterested. There is a slight difference between uninterested and disinterested. But I won't go into that now. You can look it up yourselves if you're interested. No pun, pun intended there. So here, when he says he never wears black gloves, he means he never goes to funerals and he never eats lunch. And then he says, like, maybe I could have been his best friend, which is strange, isn't it? So basically, we know that Scrooge had no real friends, but the fact that they just occasionally used to speak made him his best friend. So stroll away means to walk away. So fairly straightforward. The phantom glided on into a street. Its finger pointed to two persons meeting. Scrooge listened again, thinking that the exp explanation might lie here. He knew these men also perfectly. They were men of business, very wealthy and of great importance. He had made a point always of standing well in their esteem, in a business point of view, that is, strictly in a business point of view. How are you, said one. How are you? returned the other. Well, said the first, old Scratch has got his own at last, eh? So I am told, returned the second. Cold, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. You're not a skater, I suppose. No, no, something else to think of. Good morning. Not another word. That was their meeting, their conversation and their parting. Okay, so they walk on and there are two people standing. So they go over there, and Scrooge knows these men, they're very rich and very important, and he's always made a point of getting their respect, of getting along with them, okay? But notice here, only from a business point of view, not personal. So they greet each other, and old Scratch means, a word, scratch means a word for the devil. <clears throat> so they're talking about Scrooge, but they're referring to him as the devil saying, oh, he's, he's died at last. And he says, yeah. But then notice, that's about it. They don't really care because suddenly he changes the subject to the weather. He says, cold, isn't it? And this guy says, well, yeah, but about the, it's about what you would expect for Christmas time. So obviously at Christmas, it normally is cold. And then he makes a bit of a joke. You're not just saying, so in other words, it's cold enough that you could go skating because the, the water will have frozen over. And then he, this guy says, no, no, something else to think of. He's saying, oh, I've got something else to do. Good morning. And he says goodbye. And that's it. That's the extent of their conversation about Scrooge, even though they knew him quite well and they respected him as a man of business. Okay. And that was it. And they, and they move on. Scrooge was at first inclined to be surprised that the spirit should attach importance to conversations apparently so trivial. But feeling assured that they must have some hidden purpose, he set himself to consider what it was likely to be. They could scarcely be supposed to have any bearing on the death of Jacob, his old partner, for that was past, and this ghost's province was the future. Nor could he think of anyone immediately connected with himself to whom he could apply them. But nothing doubting that to whomsoever they applied, 
they had some latent moral for his own improvement, he resolved to treasure up every word he heard and everything he saw, and especially to observe the shadow of himself when it appeared, for he had an expectation that the conduct of his future self would give him the clue he missed and would render the solution of these riddles easy. Okay, so this paragraph is slightly more challenging. So inclined means tending towards. So he's initially surprised that the spirit should think that these conversations are important because to him they seem trivial, which means unimportant. But he's he feels sure that they must have some kind of a hidden purpose. And he, he decides he's going to pay attention to them, okay? And obviously he hasn't worked out that it's it's him that has died. And the only person he can think of who's died that's related to him is his business partner, Jacob Marley. But it can't be him because that was in the past and he knows that this ghost is about the future. And he can't think of anyone else connected to him that it could apply to. But not doubting, nothing doubting, that whoever it is, they've got a hidden meaning, message for his own improvement. He decides, resolve means to decide, decide to really listen carefully to every word and, and everything he sees, and also to look out for himself to appear. He's looking for his own future self to appear. And he knows that his future conduct, his future behavior, or his future presence, will give him the clues he needs to work out what's going on here. To render here means to prov provide or present the solution, the answer of these puzzles, okay? Okay, so, he looked about in that very place for his own image, but another man stood in his accustomed corner, and though the clock pointed to his usual time of day for being there, he saw no likeness of himself among the multitudes that poured in through the porch. It gave him little surprise, however, for he had been resolving in his mind a change of life and thought and hoped he saw his newborn resolutions carried out in this. Okay, so he looks about for himself, okay, and the, the image doesn't mean here ghost or anything, he's saying he's looking for himself, but where he normally stands, so accustomed means habit, habitual, so he would normally stand in some corner, okay, we don't know exactly where, we don't need to know, but where he would normally stand, some other man is standing. And even though the time is the same time that Scrooge would be standing here in that place, he couldn't. He can't find himself, he can't see himself or recognize himself in all the many people. So multitudes means many people that are pouring in through the porch. So porch is the entrance to a building. So whatever building this is, we don't know, but somewhere in the city center. And, but then he thinks, well, maybe that's not surprising because he's already decided in his mind that he's going to change his life. So he's thinking, okay, so maybe in the future he's changed his life and therefore he doesn't go to this place anymore. And maybe that's why he can't see himself there. So yeah, so resolutions are like New Year resolutions, promises that you make to yourself. So he's thinking that maybe he made these promises to himself to change. And one of those promises was that he would change his way of doing business. And that's why he's not where he normally would be. Okay. Quiet and dark, beside him stood the phantom with its outstretched hand. When he roused himself from his thoughtful quest, he fancied from the turn of the hand and its situation in reference to himself that the unseen eyes were looking at him keenly. It made him shudder and feel very cold. Okay, so let's just go back and look at this paragraph. So quiet and dark. So the phantom, the ghost, is quiet and dark and it's standing behind, beside him, uh, outstretched hand, so his hand held out. And when, when he here, this means Scrooge, roused himself. So roused means to wake up, but in this case, not literally, but metaphorically, from his thoughtful quest. So quest means something that you're looking for. So he's talking about here that he was looking for himself and he's very thoughtful. And then he suddenly realizes that the phantom is looking at him. And from the way that its hand is held and the way it's standing beside him, 
he feels that the unseen eyes of the ghost so remember scrooge can't see its eyes because it, he's covered with the shroud but he feels that it's looking at him keenly sharply and this makes him shudder tremble and feel very cold they left the busy scene and went into an obscure part of the town where Scrooge had never penetrated before, although he recognized its situation and its bad repute. The ways were foul and narrow, the shops and houses wretched, the people half naked, drunken, slipshod, ugly, alleys and archways like so many cesspools, disgorged their offenses of smell and dirt and life upon the straggling streets and the whole quarter reeked with crime, with filth and misery. Okay, so they leave that place and they go to this obscure means hidden in this case and penetrate means to go in so Scrooge has never been there before but he kind of this phrase here means that he's, he recognizes the sort of area it is and bad reputation so foul means nasty bad smelling and wretched means miserable so the people so there's like is using listing here half naked drunken slipshod means lacking organization and there's a simile here successful so literally means where waste human waste is gathered so basically it's just saying that these streets are so disgorge means to pour out so the streets are pouring out these nasty smells and dirt and life and straggling means kind of untidy or irregular streets and here how quarter in this case means area reek is another word for nasty smelling okay so basically they've gone to this area which is nasty and and horrible smelling and we'll find out why in a minute Far in this den of infamous resort, there was a low-browed beetling shop be below a penthouse roof where iron, old rags, bottles, bones and greasy offal were bought. Upon the floor within were piled up heaps of rusty keys, nails, chains, hinges, files, scales, weights and refuse iron of all kinds. Secrets that few would like to scrutinize were bred and hidden in mountains of unseemly rags, masses of corrupted fat, and sepulchres of bone, bones. Sitting in among the wares he dealt in, by a charcoal stove made of old bricks, was a grey-haired rascal, nearly seventy years of age, who had screened himself from the cold air without by a frowsy curtaining of miscellaneous tatters hung upon a line, and smoked his pipe in all the luxury of calm retirement. Okay, so this description is quite challenging. So den is a room or a place where people go. It can have positive or negative connotations. In this case, it's negative, okay? Infamous doesn't mean the opposite of famous. It means famous in a bad way. A resort is another word for people where people go or meet. So low-browed beetling shop. So brow is obviously where your the top of your eyes Beetling means like a, a beetle, so overhanging. So it's just saying that the shop is is low, maybe has a, an overhanging bit to it in the front, uh, below a penthouse roof. Now, a penthouse nowadays tends to have connotations of luxury, but here it just means a bit at the top, where which is used for storage. So it's got all these things here. Offal means the entire internal organs of animals. Uh, so basically it's like this shop where you can buy almost anything and everything. And inside there's heaps of all these things here. So that's really straightforward. Refuse means thrown away, rubbish. And scrutinize means to examine. And unseemly means not very nice. So rags, corrupted means 
in this case just means kind of going off. Sepulchre is where dead bodies are, are placed, okay? And wares are things that you sell, buy and sell, or sell. Charcoal is a bit like coal, but it's not quite the same, but you, we don't need to worry about the difference here. You can look up the difference yourself if you want. So stove means cooker, so cooker made of old bricks. Gray-haired rascal. So rascal is like not quite a criminal, but some kind of a dodgy person in this case. He's almost 70 years of age, screened. He's covered himself from the cold air outside. So without here in the old days meant outside. Scrooge and the phantom came into the presence of this man just as a woman with a heavy bundle slunk into the shop. But she had scarcely entered when another woman, similarly laden, came in too, and she was closely followed by a man in faded black who was no less startled by the sight of them than they had been upon the recognition of each other. After a short period of blank astonishment in which the old man with the pipe had joined them, they all three burst into a laugh. Okay, so Scrooge and the Phantom come into the shop in front of this man. Obviously, the man can't see them. Just as a woman with a heavy bundle comes in, so slunk or slink means to come in in a secretive manner, but she's hardly entered when another woman who's also got a heavy bundle comes in as well. And then a third person comes in who's a man this time, wearing faded black clothes and they're all startled surprised to see each other and we'll see why in a minute okay and they recognize each other and they're all astonished and the old man the shopkeeper is also also astonished and then they all start laughing okay so charwoman means cleaner laundress means the person who does the laundry and Undertaker is a man who arranges funerals. I mean, the way she, what she's saying here is a bit confusing about this alone thing. Maybe she means to that the owner, so old Joe, now we know the name of the owner, that they, old Joe should see each of them separately or, or alone. We know this is a dodgy place, okay? So maybe they don't want to kind of do business in front of each other. And this probably just means, oh, here's a chance to do business. And obviously, this just means that they weren't that they weren't intending. They didn't want to meet together these other people. You couldn't have met in a better place," said Old Joe, removing his pipe from his mouth. "Come into the parlour. You were made free of it long ago, you know. And the other two ain't strangers. Stop till I shut the door of the shop. Ah, how it squeaks! There ain't such a rusty bit of metal in the place as its own hinges, I believe. And I'm sure there's no such." old bones here as mine ha ha we're all suitable to our calling we're well matched come into the parlor come into the parlor okay what i'll do is i'll stop there i'll explain this paragraph in the next video so i'll just jump to this last slide here as always if you found this video useful please do subscribe and tell all your friends about it and i'll see you in the next video where we'll continue with stave four